Hi, so I'm going to make a video here showing you the disassembly and reassembly of a Bariant Model 23 two-speed self-tailing winch. Um, what you see here is everything that's needed to get going. There's a diagram of the winch up there, some winch lubricant. This is bar lube, which they don't make anymore, but there are lots of different lubricants you can use on winches. Bariant does say don't use Teflon-based lubes. Uh, mineral spirits for cleaning, a cup for cleaning parts in, a somewhat larger cup for cleaning parts in, that's an old Chinese food tray, um, along with 3M scrubby and a toothbrush, multiple sizes of screwdrivers, a pointy tool, a pair of hemostats that came from Harbor Freight for about five bucks or something, a marking pen, and a mallet, which you don't really need. You could get away with any piece of hardwood or even a bit of two by four. And perhaps the most critical thing, nitrile gloves, please save your hands. And one last item, a whole lot of paper towels. So I'm going to clear away most of this junk for the disassembly part. And we'll then get into the actual process, which is pretty quick. Okay, here we are. Um, I'm unfortunately using my Nexus 5 camera, which tends to go out of focus now and then, but I hope things will work out okay. One thing I forgot to mention is this sheet, which is a really nice thing to have to disassemble things on, because there are springs that can fly out and get lost easily, and a sheet is terrific for helping with that. So, let's see. Um, here's the winch. Um, as I said, I start with the instructions. One thing that's interesting to note is that there are multiple different varieties of this winch. So if you look here at this diagram, down at the bottom here, you see there's a gear and then a sort of funny thing and another gear stacked up. Go to a slightly different page about the Model 23 self-tailing winch, and down at the bottom, there's a gear with a connecting rod to a little thing with another gear on top. So this assembly here is completely different in the two different sets of setups. Um, this one is the one we're actually using. And uh, just earlier in the video, I included those in the video itself. Here's the deal. Everything in this guy is held together by three circle clips. And those circle clips... There's one right there. It goes around. It's got a little tab sticking out the side. And you can catch a tool underneath that and pry the tab outwards. And when you do, you can then, if you're really lucky, not only pry it outwards, but also lift up on it. And then slide it off. We're going to do that three times, and that's going to be essentially all the work involved in taking apart this winch. Okay, so the first item was that very top ring. Second item is this metal plate that sits on top of there. Then we get to here, and at this point, there's another ring. You can see this bronze thing with the little zigzags around the edge. Those are splines. Right beneath that is another ring right here. We're going to get that one out in the same way. Catch something underneath it, try to pry it outwards, and as we get it outwards, try and pry it up as well. There we go. Run around the outside of that, lifting it up, and it pops off. And we can now that sucker right out and we're done with that now comes a slightly tricky bit we have this thing right here this peeler and then inside the peeler ah, there's this um, bronze part right here 
These two are actually two separate parts. We need to separate them, and to do so, we need to hold the bronze part fixed and push the peeler counterclockwise. When we do that, strangely enough, rather than the peeler coming off the top, it's going to go downwards because there's actually a left-hand thread on this. So anyhow, we're going to turn the peeler counterclockwise. And the way to do that is with your mallet. That's the tool for the job. Before we do it, though, I'm going to make a mark right there. See, I've marked both the peeler and the bronze piece with the red line. That's so I know about how tight it should go back on. Okay, I've got it marked. Now I take this hammer and I tap. And as I do, you can see I'm making progress. That was a lot easier because I did it yesterday already. So it'll be a lot more work for you. You can also bang on it with a piece of two by four. It's your choice. Anyhow, that's done. We're gonna turn that a couple of turns and it's done. At this point, we can grab this bronze part and lift it up. And you can see there are splines on the inside of that. Oh, might as well take the peeler off as well. So, bronze part, peeler. There are splines on the inside of the bronze part that fit over these splines on the shaft. And right here, you can see the groove in the shaft that that ring fit in. And similarly, there's a groove up here that the first ring fit in. Clear enough? So far, so good. All right, let's continue onwards. <clears throat> Next step, take out these four screws. Um, each screw has a spring underneath it. They're not very tightly, they're not tightly wound springs, so when you unscrew it, they don't pop out. Um, what will happen, though, if you're like me, you'll find that as you take these out, there's a lot of crud at the bottom of the screws, like ancient dirt and grease that's gotten stuck in there. These are parts that are definitely going to need some cleaning. Okay, there are the four screws. One, two, three, four. And we can take off the top half of the self-tailor. Good enough. What next? Next up, is this metal plate right here. It comes right off. And then the entire winch drum lifts off. There we go. One possibility when you lift the winch drum off is that one of these guys, or both of them, will be stuck in here. Just a warning, they might come out and then drop out after you're done. Okay. So, where do we stand right now? I'm going to move around and compare the top half of that picture. I'm sorry, the right-hand side of that picture with what we've got over here. A ring, a cap, a ring, the bronze part, the peeler, the self-tailor, the ring above, below the self-tailor, and the bronze drum. So that's all the parts for that section. And then we get into the meat of things here in the actual drum itself. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. Give me a little more room. And now we're going to disassemble this thing. There's a central spindle here. There are some gears down below, three sets of them, one pile of three gears, one idler gear, and another ratchet gear that's mounted on the central spindle. Let's start disassembling. First item to take out, these roller bearings. Slip those off and take them aside. Chances are yours will be disgusting and slimy and covered with crap. Next up, this set of, uh, set of gears down here, they come out. Um, if you're really lucky, you can kind of fiddle this guy around a bit. And without even taking the pin, without even taking the cotter pin all the way out, 
you can lift up the shaft. But anyhow, cutter pin out, the shaft comes up, and these three gears come out. The three gears are really a big bronze set of things here, and then an extra gear on top of them with some ratchet pawls inside. That top gear slips off, and we're left with the bronze assembly and the ratchet pawls. Each ratchet, there's a pawl, and then there's a little spring inside there. When we remove the pawls, the springs really want to run away and get lost. So what I'm going to do is cover this with my hand, lift up the pawl gently by wiggling it, and it gets high enough. There's the spring, and it's now unsprung, so I can just lift the thing the rest of the way out and set it down over here. Same deal on the other side. Pawl and spring and the gear assembly. Done. Okay, what's left? Oh, we have to take out this guy. It's possible that your um, cotter pin for this goes from the inside to the outside. It might go from the outside to the inside. Either way, we're going to take that cotter pin out. And here's one of the appalling bits of design in this winch. The shaft for that particular gear has to come out the bottom. So you go inside and press down on it. And out it comes from the bottom. And then the idler gear can slip out. Great. Now all we're left with is this central spindle with the ratchet gear that's mounted on it. How do we get that off? Well, it looks pretty awful down here. It's, you know, you take a look in there and it's, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what's going on. But let me show you. This is the end of a spline shaft. The spindle comes all the way up and has splines cut in this end. And right beneath it, down there, looking like a washer, is actually another one of those circle rings. So I'm going to go in and try to remove that one. See if I can figure out where it starts. Right there. Okay. So I'm going to stick my tool in here, pry it outwards. By the way, this is a, a really good time to actually mount your winch in a vise so that you don't have to hold it with both hands. But I'm not going to bother with that right now. Okay, almost got that thing out. Okay, there it is. It's partly sprung out. I'm going to stick my screwdriver underneath it to pry it upwards, and we're on our way. Why Marriott thought this particular arrangement was a good idea is completely beyond me, but hey, I got the winch cheap, so I can't really complain. Okay, I'm just prying this thing off all the way. There's a certain amount of tension in this, and I suppose it's possible that if you pried it off in the wrong way, it could spring across the room. Anyhow, let's set that one down, and now we can actually remove this spline shaft from this assembly. When I did this, it was pretty tightly in there. I had to squirt some, uh, what do you call it, uh, liquid wrench in between the two to get them to free up. And then, frankly, I just put my press on it and press the thing out. So I push down on this, and it gradually presses that whole central shaft upwards. And there we go. The central spindle is now out. And when that happens, at the bottom, 
this gear can now come out. And we're done. That's the end of disassembling that part. This gear, again, a couple of ratchets and pawls. So we'll take off the outer gear. We'll take out the pawls one at a time, carefully guarding the springs. Same deal on this side. Two more pawls, two more springs, and that ratchet assembly. At this point, we've pretty much got all this stuff laid out. The idler gear in its shaft. There we go. The central um, spindle gear and the ratchet gear that goes atop it, plus its four parts for rat ratchets. And then finally, this assembly over here with its shaft, the ratchet gear, the ratchet assembly, and the various ratchets and uh, springs, and finally, importantly, this part that goes at the very bottom. So that's the whole story. This is part number 22 on the diagram. That's the whole story for disassembly. What next? Well, once you've got it disassembled, you clean things. You clean everything. I suggest really strongly soaking everything in a cup of mineral spirits for a whole day before you start trying to scrape stuff off. Although if you can remove a bunch of globs of, of uh, grease from the thing before you do the soaking, you get more use out of your mineral spirits. I already did this, which is why all these parts actually look pretty clean. So in a moment, I'll come back and do the reassembly. Okay, let's talk for a moment before we do reassembly about actual parts like this one. So in this part, the part wears against the casing up at the top, at the bottom. The splines fit into that gear, and we want to be able to take them out again someday in the future. And the top surface of it rotates around the inner surface of this central casting. We want to lubricate all of those. Use the lubricant recommended by your manufacturer, as they say, and since bar lube is no longer available, though I happen to have this tube, that means looking around for something equivalent. Okay, I'm going to spread a little tiny bit of that lubricant on here. That's way more than is needed, so I'm going to spread it down here too. And down here. And you know, that's probably plenty of lubricant for this thing. It's enough that if you picked it up with your hands without gloves on, they'd come away a little slimy. I want to lubricate the bottom end of this and the splines. And getting the splines lubricated is going to be a little tricky because they kind of dip in there. For that, I'm going to use a toothbrush. So first, I'm going to do around here, spread the remainder on there, and I'm just going to sort of go like this, same as brushing your teeth, get into every crack and crevice. Okay, we're done. That's about how much lube wants to go on things. Same deal with these guys. A little bit, dab it around, and then Roll the thing around in your hand a bit. You're pretty much done. So, not a lot. Don't pack this full of grease. It'll just mean lots more work later. One place where you might want some grease is actually up in the ends here, because that's where the little pins have to spin around in their holes. So, I'm going to go ahead and lube up the rest of the parts. No re need for you to watch me do that. And then we'll come back and do the assembly. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to reassemble things. At this point, I've greased up just about everything. Um, one of the things I want to point out is when I greased this up, I greased all of the teeth on this gear, but I didn't put any grease up here. And that's because in these upper parts, you really want... Oh, there's also grease on this gear. 
um, on the outer teeth, but the inside is clean. So I want to talk about installing these things. They go back in like this. That is, the, f the long straight part is on the outside, the cutaway part is on the inside. And of course, there needs to be one of these things, one of these springs in there. The springs have a straight leg and a bent leg. The bent leg goes next to this piece. Sorry, the, the straight leg goes next to that piece. So I put the straight leg in there. To install this thing, I'm going to use the hemostats. I'm going to take them and clamp that like that. You can see it squeezes the spring down nice and small and lets me just drop it right in there and then release. And now that guy is ready to be a spring. Same deal with the next one. I take the piece, I take the spring, clamp with the hemostat, I latch it, I drop it in, yeah, I have to coax it a little here, there we go, and release, and that one's ready to go too. So, when I'm done with that, this part goes on here, this gear has a cutaway on one side, and sort of a raised surface on the other, the cutaway goes towards this and fits with this, this little lip here. So I place this on there, and then I sort of squeeze the two ratchets in and slip this over the top. There we go. That's how it works. What about lubrication? Lubrication for this? Sewing machine oil or other really, really lightweight machine oil. A little sewing machine oil onto this and that will dribble down into that socket that will dribble down into that socket and then I'm going to put a little around the outside as well and ah, spin the thing around so that everything gets nicely coated with that lightweight machine oil in there there we go Beautiful, huh? Okay, that's that one. Let's assemble the other one. Same deal, ratchet. The one side of the thing goes there. Clip it into with the hemostats. And then we need to drop it in here. And you'll notice there's a problem. It needs to go in this way. One of these has the gear counterclockwise, and one of them has the ratchets counterclockwise, one of them has the ratchets clockwise. So I had to flip it over and coax it in there, but from the other direction. There we go. So that one. Last guy. Drop it in. Clip it from the other side. Drop it into this thing. By the way, something you might notice here, see how the copper here looks a little bit pink in some spots? That's desincification that's happened because somebody's let corrosion go on in the metals here. Okay, I'm going to place this guy, which also has a, bev a sort of inset on this side, but a flat side on the other one. The inset thing goes against this collar. So goes on this way, put it in place, and now we do a little lubricating. A drop of oil on that pole, a drop of oil on that one, and a little bit of oil elsewhere in the assembly. Doesn't need to be a whole lot, just enough to get in there and make sure everything's wet. That's it. Good. That's done. This guy, the idler gear, you actually want a little bit of winch lube on that.
too, just between the shaft and the gear itself. I lubricated the other two shafts and I forgot this one, so I'll put a tiny dab of stuff on there. That's too much. Yeah, way too much. So, I'll just leave that on there. Tuck it in. Spread a little round so that it gets into the hole there. There we go. And I'm going to spread a little on this top surface because that surface right there and that surface right there are both actual surfaces that this thing travels on. It rests on those surfaces and spins around. Okay, I'll set that down. Now, let's start putting it together. How's it all go? First things first, we're going to put in the central um, spindle. And I want to put that in, but when I do, I have to put this gear in first. It has to come in from below, it has to go over that little lip, and then we can drop this thing in, and it'll drop down and turn it over and push this. You know, the splines aren't perfectly smooth. Sometimes you get it tucked in and it just won't go in properly. So I'm going to tap that out. And try rotating it just a tiny bit. Better. Well, a little better. I'll just tap it into place here. There we go. That's on there. And to hold it in place, we have to put on this little tiny ring. Same deal. You open it up with a screwdriver so that you can put one edge onto the spline. You get it tucked way down at the bottom of the spline. And then you work your way around to keep it tucked in as you go around. And just about there. Yep, there we go. We're all the way around. And now we go around the second section and snap, it's in. That guy is now attached permanently. Excellent. Okay, rest of the gears. Um, the idler gear is next. You may remember this one sits in here and the pin comes up from the bottom. And there's a useful trick here. We take this pin and we're going to mark it. Uh, let me grab my marking pen here. We're going to mark it on the bottom with a line it's parallel to the cotter pin. Just makes it a little easier to see what we're doing. So we're going to stick this in here in a way that well, it's got to go through the gear. And the cotter pin has to line up with the hole further up. So we're going to set it up so that it's pointing straight out. Push it all the way in till it's just about level. And now when we go up here, we can actually see inside there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's almost lined up. And I'm going to take my little pointy tool, stick it in there, and kind of jiggle it around a little bit until I know it really is lined up. Okay, we're good. Now I'm going to take a cotter pin, shove it in there. <coughs> Shove it in there, I say. These are really heavy cotter pins. Um, 
need to pinch it flat. If you have a fresh cotter pin to use here, it helps a lot. Okay, I'm going to slip that cotter pin in there. There we go. It's in. You see one arm of the cotter pin is a little longer than the other. I'm just going to take my screwdriver, press it in there, and press on that a little bit, and that bends it. And if you actually think about the load on this, there's nothing trying to make this cotter pin come in or out. So if, if when I pull on this, it doesn't want to come further than that, I'm actually fine. I'm going to make it go a little bit further, bend it just a little more. There we go. Now, that really won't come out. We're good. Okay, next up, this tall stack of gears. And does this go face up or face down? Uh, this one sits with the big gear on the bottom. Stick it in. This guy with its cotter pin drops right in. Goes down. We'll push this in. And to keep that from coming out, we'll pry apart the two legs a little bit. How much? Just enough that it really can't come out. That's it. Okay, we're done with that. We drop on the two roller bearings. Looking good. We put on the winch body. There it goes. Sets up with the gear. Next up comes this plate. Line it up with the holes in the top here. Got to line those up. And then this plate goes on top. Also lined up. And now we put in these screws. And the variant folks say Put a little bit of Loctite on each one. So I've got some blue Loctite. I'm going to put just a little drop onto the threads there. Done. That's one. Drop onto those threads. Number two. Drop on those threads. Number three. And a drop on these threads. Number four. I've got a bigger drop, but that's life. Okay, let's put those in. Press down a little. See if we can find the hole. There we go. We're in. Snug it up until the shoulder of that bolt hits the, the ring there, and that'll stop it. And now the Loctite will hold it in place. Same deal here. A little pressure to Get it started. And finally, that one. Okay, that's all, all four bolts. I'll remind you, I did actually put a little bit of grease on here. I'm going to add just a drop or two of oil as well. This machine oil is a fine thing. Okay, next up comes the peeler. That's going to sit somewhere, and you might this might be a really good time to think about where you want the peeler to be relative to the bolts in the bottom, but I'm not going to go into the details of that. Basically, wherever you put this thing, wherever you, wherever you put this little red arrow that we have from having marked it earlier, and we're going to slide this guy around onto it, Wherever that sits is going to be where the peeler ends up being. So you could say, I want the peeler to be down here. You just lift this off and rotate it around and set it down there. Okay, having done so, we now have to make the peeler fit onto the threads of this thing. I'm going to press down on it, and I'm going to turn the peeler itself clockwise. 
attempt to get it started on its threads. Oh, there we go. We're started, and now we'll tap it until it's locked in place. <coughs> now, I mentioned this mark was from when I had put it loosely in place doing the work earlier. I, in fact, want it to be considerably tighter than that. So I'm going to whale on it a bit more. And that's probably about as tight as it was the last time. Next up, this split ring. Again, split the ring with a screwdriver to give you a piece you can get started down underneath this splined gear, or splined uh, bronze tube. Work your way around bit by bit. Continue working your way around, all the way around to here, and that is now snapped into place. Yay! Okay, almost done. This plate goes on top, and finally, the very last split ring goes on here. Zippity, zippity, zippity. Okay, we're done. We've got ourselves a winch. Somewhere here I've got a winch handle. I did have a winch handle. I can actually see that the thing works. Yeah, I don't know what I did with the winch handle. Uh, you turn it this way, it goes slowly. You turn it the other way. <coughs> there we go. There we go. Turn it this way, it goes slowly. Go that way, it turns fast. It sounds pretty nice. You can hear the ratchets working. We're done. Not too hard. Pretty nice end results.